Hello y'all, this is American Conquest, a real-time strategy game developed by GSC Game World, who is known for the Cossacks and Stalker series. This game was released in 2002 in the EU and 2003 in North America, and it is all about conflict in the American continents from the 15th century to the early 19th century. We are going to complete the first mission of what I guess could be considered the tutorial campaign. This part of the game focuses a lot on the voyages of Christopher Columbus from 1492 to 1502. One thing I will say is that missions do have like an intro that does involve quite a bit of voice acting, so I'm not going to talk while that is going on. On the 3rd of August, 1492, an expedition of three ships left the port of Palos, fully equipped to search for a seaway to India. The expedition was led by Christopher Columbus, a man destined to go down in history as the discoverer of a continent previously unknown to the Europeans. The most striking fact of his voyage, however, is that Columbus was not actually seeking to discover new lands. He was looking for a sea route to the distant country of India, a land whose fabulous riches had been the subject of many a myth, which had kindled the fire of greed in the eyes of all men regardless of whether or not they had previously been prone to avarice. It was from India that Columbus was to bring his patrons much gold, silver, spice, and slaves to repay them hundredfold for the expenses of the voyage. Much was invested into the expedition. Spanish Queen Isabella even had to pawn her diamond crown to cover the cost of the venture. The Spaniards had one major rival, King John II of Portugal, who was well aware of the impracticability of the plan Columbus had made. He knew the Spanish squadron would never reach India, but he was equally sure that the Genoese would discover hitherto unexplored lands in the West, and that these lands would for some time draw the court's attention away from searching for a route to India, which would buy him some time in the race for fabulous riches from overseas. Before turning to the Spanish crown, Columbus had already sought support from the Portuguese and been rejected. The fact was that the Portuguese king had already heard of America's existence, which had been testified to in numerous records of travels and explorations, and of possible new lands in the western region of the Atlantic as early as 1470. Some parts of America's Atlantic coast were marked on maps which a Portuguese navigator had compiled in 1452. After 1452, a large number of royal patents were issued to captains for some unknown islands in the Atlantic, authorizing them to seek out these lands and settle there. The Spanish crown was disturbed by the Portuguese behavior. From 1488 to 1495, Spanish spies in Lisbon were constantly sending reports to their rulers about Portuguese vessels secretly sailing off to the west. It was time to act. On the 12th of August, 1492, a fair wind carried Columbus's squadron out of the harbor, and he set a course for the American coast. On October 11th, he approached one of the isles in the Bahaman archipelago. Christopher Columbus raised the Spanish flag, and declared the island to be located at the gates of India and the property of their royal majesties Isabella and Ferdinand. The details of the conquest were taken down by the expedition's notary, Rodrigo de Escobedo. In a document that declared the native islanders to be Castilian subjects, Columbus's ships then began to explore the shores of the New World, unaware of the dangers awaiting them at every turn. At Christmas, the flagship Santa Maria was wrecked on a coral reef, the explorers decided to set up a colony on the nearest island. On January the 4th, Columbus left 38 people behind with a stock of weapons and food in the new colony they had named Navidad, Christmas, and set sail for Spain. On March the 4th, the explorers stood before King John II, who welcomed Columbus with open arms and affirmed his own rights to the new world. King John later offered to discuss the rights to the newly discovered lands and a treaty was drawn up in 1494, whereby the demarcation line was to follow the meridian 370 leagues west of the Cape Verde Islands. According to the agreement, Brazil went to Portugal. Pope Alexander VI divided the whole new world and its countries, discovered or not, between two monarchs, two states actively patronized by the Roman Church, Spain and Portugal. Now it's high time other European states laid claim to the new world and stood up for their rights with the power of their guns. The division of the world continues. With that introduction finished, we got our backstory and whatnot. 
Once we're thrown into the action, the first thing we will have to do is build a camp and replenish our food supply. Also, we gotta create 35 more peasants. The group of peasants we started with are going to be used to construct a fort and our halberdiers are going to go chase after a Native American. I'm not sure how well they would do with that because the AI in this game likes retreating once any kind of infantry gets close to them. Usually, at least in this instance, they are running away and making it painful for our units to get them. Also, we sent the drummer with the halberdiers, but I don't think he would be very useful. I think he may boost morale, but I'm not sure, to be honest. We may get a new message, I think. Oh, there it is. It tells us how to create more peasants, which is done by left clicking on the dwelling and clicking on the unit icon to create a singular peasant per click. Or we could order five units per click by holding down the shift key. You can see everything that the message tells us. I'm demonstrating it right now. And also, I'm going to send some peasants to go do some stuff. And these halberdiers are just having problems with these archers. They cannot catch anything. Yeah, it's just annoying, but they're not that big of a threat, at least. They're not exactly destroying our entire camp. Oh, that's neat. We can make an infinite number of units. Basically, this means as long as we have the resources, the population, and in this case, a dwelling, we can pump out a gigantic workforce without any kind of extra micromanagement. Using the control key, our peasant production has been set to infinite. What else can we do? Maybe have the rest of the peasants work on a farm? Yeah, yeah, well, let's do that. And let's see what the halberdiers are up to. They're doing halberd stuff. All right then. Oh, and I just realized we have an officer. I'm not sure what he does, but he exists. We are told by Conquistador Man that we need 25 more peasants. And on top of that, he informs us how to chop wood. And in order to do that, we must first build a storehouse. An army of peasants is gonna be used to build a storehouse near the coast. And while that is going on, a halberdier is trying to chase down an archer with not much success because he seems that he's getting shot at by multiple sides and he's not having much... Yeah, he's just not doing well at it. But anyway, our peasants are now chopping wood, which is great news for us. We have done it, I guess. We made the certain number of peasants we needed to win. But either way, the mission is over and we are going to go back to the select screen. And with that, the video is going to stop here. If you enjoyed the game, check it out in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to leave a comment. Have an awesome day. I'll see you later. Bye.